Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Doubly's Talk Tech. As always, Mike Hoffman. I am Daniel Bogdanoff, and we are here with Stephanie Rubiklava, who is, um, well, I'll let her introduce herself. Today, you know, and we're on a DDR kick still, so um, we wanted to talk about DDR RX testing today. So, Stephanie, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little about your background? Yeah, so um, I do have a background in memory where I worked at a, a DRAM manufacturing company for 10 years and been here for 10 years working with Agilent Keysight. And I am now um, R&D engineer, which actually I say now, but I've been an R&D engineer <laughs> for my enough. whole career. But, um, um, and, and developing our solutions for both transmitter and receiver. And now yeah. working specifically on DDR5 receiver test. And this is a new thing for the industry, correct? Correct. Yeah. So this is a very first, this is a fifth generation DDR and our very first receiver um, testing that we're going to be doing for DDR. So historically for DDR, receiver test was never a thing that had to be done. Um, or cor yeah, correct. Because really um, in the slower speeds, there was plenty of margin for error in that measurement. So you can't say it's never been done. Obviously, you have to test the device's sure. capability to receive data. Right? That makes sense, yes. Um, so they have done it in the past, but just not to the accuracy that we need to now. Now that we're in faster speeds, um, that accuracy, we don't have the margin for error in our measurements anymore. Okay. And so we want to make sure we measure our receiver's capabilities and, and um, do that. That makes sense. Yeah. Was it that previous generations of DDR, the test wasn't standardized, and now it, now it is? Is that the difference now? And or? there's very much truth to that as well. Um, there was no standardization of receiver test, and now we're seeing that show up in the specs. Yeah. Cool. So are techniques being borrowed from other like high-speed serial technologies, or where is that spec coming from? Yeah, so PCI Express is a great example of receiver test. It has the longest history that I know of um, in receiver testing, and we, there's a lot to learn. And so we're definitely doing what we can to learn from PCI Express. However, DDR is very different, so we're also still having to learn new stuff. Um, PCI, you know, any of our traditional receiver tests is a differential pair PRBS is perfect. I mean, I say perfect. They probably don't think it's perfect. <laughs> Sure. Um, signal. But when you compare it to DDR, where you have a lot of different terminations and different, um, I was even showing my boss a couple waveforms. And he's like, wow, it's that different across the world? I go, no, that's that different on the same device. Oh, <laughs> and, huh. he, and it's, you know, there's just, it's really difficult. They're very, it's a very different single ended. Um, you know, so there's just sure. other issues that we have to learn and, and how to handle that properly. Some, some new territory for people here. Yeah. What, what has been, so the spec isn't released yet. Correct. I think we talked about with Jenny two episodes ago. Mm -hmm. um, how, I don't know how involved you are in this process. How is that, getting that defined, how, how is that process going? Um, it, it's going well. I, I'm not as, I used to be actually very well involved with the definitions in DDR4, um, I was, but now my role's changed, but I still I still see what's happening, and, and it's going well. The industry as a whole really seems to want to make these definitions because we need to to be successful. So it's a pretty friendly conversation. It's not necessarily large exactly, yeah. corporations I mean, <laughs> jockeying for their way of doing things. Right. Or? It's really we're all collaborating, learning, okay. you know, just like we were saying from PCI Express and then trying to move forward in, in these clear definitions. Okay. Yeah. What what does a receiver test look like? How does that happen? Um, so we have a BERT, okay. um, which is going to generate, it's got a pattern generator that's going to generate our signals. And on those signals, we can um, apply different voltages, stresses of jitter and everything. And um, then the BERT also has an air detector, which is a loopback signal that then comes back. And we can, um, and then the device is sending back really what it thought it saw for data. Okay. We also will have a scope because the scope we need to calibrate, um, and that's almost a really big part of the receiver test solution is the calibration. Because okay. we need to, you know, it's one thing to set the BERT to one volt, for instance, but by right. the time it's actually at the uh, measurement test point of the device, it can actually be 0.9. We've got loss in channels and cables and other things like that. And normally 100 millivolts wouldn't be an issue, but yeah. that's 10% of your But your Exactly. And, and, well, and again, earlier we were talking about how precise we need to be. If we were 100 millivolts off, that may actually make a part appear to fail, but it's not. 
Oh, interesting. Right, yeah. or, or appear to have more margin than it does. Yeah. So, so uh, the BERT is injecting a signal into the what 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 is what's the dot this is just the dim i guess yeah so um there's dim test there's going to be um device tests as well so you in um ddr we have a register which is on register dims which um and then we have the dram itself and then there's buffers as well okay and so the bert's sending a signal out and then basically are you checking basically the quality of the channel because it's just sending out a P, the PBRS signal and then diffing it compared, you know, here's what I sent, here's what I received back and looking for errors or? You know, while there's a channel and there'll be a defined channel that we'll test over that should mimic motherboard servers and other things like that, um, we're, we're testing the receiver itself. So that either the um, DEMS capabilities to receive that data under certain conditions or the, the devices. So um, what gets looped back is the device and DIMMs are going to have some logic in it that will loop back the signal saying, I saw a 01011002. No, there's no two. This isn't Pam. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, but um, and so that's, that's what, that's how that's going to work. Okay. Um, does, does the receiver look pretty similar for the different, you know, blocks that are going to be, because from memory, obviously, you have to both send and receive. So both mm-hmm. devices have a receiver. Both devices have a transmitter. Um, how how does the receiver vary across different devices? Is it? You know, they're very similar in concept because you have a signal called DQS, which is a, a data clock that clocks in the data, and then you have data. Okay. So um, all of them have basically that com- um, concept, or there's also command address, which you have a, system, a clock, and then command address that gets clocked in on that. Okay. And so very similar okay. across the devices. You mentioned calibrating the receiver. Can you... That, that, dig into that a little bit more. Yeah, for so us? we're we're calibrating the signal going to the receiver. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're calibrating that um, at the device, so at the ball of the part, for instance, when we're doing device tests, um, that it is a certain level, certain stresses, certain jitter, everything that we believe, you know, that we know is going to the receiver to be okay. tested. That's what we're calibrating. Okay, so you can basically inject whatever sort of you said this earlier, jitter and mm-hmm. you know, bit errors, that type of thing, whatever you want to do and right. see how your receiver handles it. Yep. Okay. Are you developing these tests or are you or, or is that part of the JEDEC? Are they are they developing the the testing standards for receiver tests? You know, they do develop a lot of the testing standards um, definitions for um, so for instance, um, you know, if if they want to do a certain voltage test, there is some some level of definitions in JEDEC. Um, but I but I do work with um, everyone in those type of definitions and what we can and can't do, and then okay. then develop um, mm. you know to use the term develop, but then you know develop them into the application. Key sites version of that test, yes, yeah, built into our tools. Okay, mm-hmm. so is it just like specs? Like you need to have this level of you know this bit error rate tolerance and this type of you know so there's two ways to look at it one is compliance so compliance is you know you must be able to with you know it's amplitude is always the easiest thing to you know just discuss there's a lot of components and whether a signal gets recognized or not but um if we say amplitude um so so there can be a spec that says um well you must be able to take a 70 millivolt amplitude Okay, so so that's compliance. So you can test, and you can test down, saying, okay, yes, this receiver can um, can handle a seventy millivolt and, and less. Mm-hmm. But then there's um, characterization as well. So let's characterize okay. how much margin we actually have. Let's characterize where my de- device actually starts failing. Right. And and so that's just as important. Um, you know, there's different people that would be interested in those different things. There's some people who want to you know, check mark that says, okay, yes, I do meet this. And then there's a lot of people, especially in the new design and, and in these earlier stages that are going to want to know where is their fail point? Um, you know, you generally want to design with a little more margin. So you'd rather that fail point, maybe be 50 millivolts for instance, instead sure. of 70. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Interesting. Um, what are, what are people struggling with? Like, uh, so you must have some, I know you're more, you're an R and D, you're not necessarily out like at, other people's sites, but mm-hmm. that must trickle back to you. What are what what's been challenging? Um, definitely receiver test as a whole. I mean, it's just like I said, it was new to DDR five, and mm-hmm. so what are these concepts? What is the calibrations? Where do we calibrate um, to? What is um, what fixturing do we need to properly test this? 
um, it's unfortunately it's been everything to do with yeah. <laughs> receiver testing, right? Yeah, um, makes sense. You know, and, and learning those concepts and learning um, what stresses do we need to do to truly test the receiver. Um, every aspect has been challenging just because okay. it's new. And so I imagine most engineers working on this have kind of been memory people for their career, and now they're getting this new, you know, new project. Mm -hmm. um, are you hearing much? So I know you're at a, a memory manufacturer for a while and probably saw some connections there. Are you hearing much from them about, are people, you know, anywhere panicking about this or are, is it just kind of par for the course? Like another It seems challenge? par for the course. They know that it, with the speed um, improvements and everything, they need to look at different stuff. I have been working with, you know, previous connections and, and um, learning well together yeah. as we, you know, applying some of the stuff they know and uh, along with what I know and, and okay. getting this moving for sure. forward. Do you have any, re if someone out there is listening or watching, working on this, anywhere that you'd recommend they go to learn? Um, or, you know, what should that process look like for someone trying to get into this? Trying to get into a receiver test. Um, other than Keysight? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, by a Keysight Bird and a Keysight Scope. And, yeah, there's yeah. Keysight Bird Scope and your, your field for Sight 9. <laughs> we'll put your email in the description of the yeah, video. Yeah, like, not me, but directly <laughs> to you. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's really, you know, that's really it is within your, um, all these, all the companies pretty much belong to Jetic. And so they're going to mm -hmm. learn from, okay. from being involved in that way and, and the interactions that are there. I was very disappointed to find the Wikipedia page for DDR5 uh -huh. was about two paragraphs. Oh, it, there's so. actually one. I'm impressed. But I'll have to go look that up. We may have to. Maybe by the time this podcast airs, we'll you know, put a bunch of pretty key site pictures on Wikipedia or something. <laughs> Just transcribe all these past episodes and make it the Wikipedia page. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Source it. <laughs> Although Wikipedia links are no following, so that doesn't really help you to, to link out. Just mm. for the record. Mm. Anyway, for all you search engine nerds out there. Um, so... And I know, I know TX isn't your side. Can you give us a little teaser about the transmitter side of things, or are you pretty pretty set in the, the receiver side? No, I, I do work a lot with transmitter. My, most of my history has been in transmitter um, as okay. far as Agilent Keysight. Um, and, and I still am involved in some of the measurement science when it comes to transmitter just because of my history um, being yeah. in memory. Um, and, and so we're, we're definitely progressing with DDR5. It's in transmitter. It's there's still there's a little bit of learning, but in transmitter we have the history all the way back to DDR one. Mm -hmm. um, there are speed improvements, there are changes, there are changes in the way that we're going to measure the data, um, and and we're we understand it and what we need to do. And it'll be so transmitter testing is definitely part. Of, yeah, it's, it is hat. par for okay. the course. So it's it's kind of <laughs> like yeah, it's okay. What what does what does that look like for for DDR? So what's what are people looking for from their transmitters, and how does how do they go about making sure it's actually functioning the way they want it to? Same type of thing, but yeah, same type of thing. So you know the uh, the specification for the DDR is at the ball of the part. The um, signal for transmitter must be a certain characteristic. Okay, you know certain voltage, certain timing relationships, and everything, and so they can test their their transmitter, you know, at the ball of the DRAM. Or register or buffer, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and um, and verify that their signals do meet those characteristics. Okay. So we're about out of time for this episode. Um, one of the things we like to do with our guests is we ask them a stupid question at the end okay. of the podcast. Um, so, Mike, uh, do you have a stupid question for Stephanie? Here's to Jenny. Was so good. I'm trying to think of another good DDR question. Let's ask you the same one. What's your favorite version of DDR and why? Let's go with DDR5 because it's the fastest. Ooh, fastest. nice. Okay. The Ferrari of DDRs. Yes. If you had to choose between a zero or a one, what would it be? One. One. Why one? <laughs> because it's like a full glass. Okay. So, sure. Yeah, the bit is fully full. It is fully I guess there's full. there's no half empty. The way. bit is on. <laughs> yeah. No meta stability here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, if you're testing using Stephanie's software and you get a bunch of extra ones, you know why, You know right? why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, eh, it's in the middle somewhere. It's called a one. Um, so that's all for today. Make sure to subscribe to Double East Talk Tech on your favorite podcast engine. Please rate and review the show. That's how we get found. Um, and subscribe if you're a YouTube person. Check out the Keysight Podcast YouTube channel, the Keysight Labs YouTube channel. Um, I think by this point we have a new blog site that's live. When this is, Ooh, so really? pretty excited about that. 
Um, there may or may not be a newsletter sign up that you should go check out um, so you can get all of you know, an update from me about all the stuff that our team is working on. So yeah, you do a couple YouTube fun. videos, right? I think I've seen you on our channel before. Yeah, it happens. You know. Is that where I know yeah. you from? Probably so, yeah. Okay. I've yet to be recognized on the street, which I'm really <laughs> happy about. Um, <laughs> I have. Have you really? Yeah, I was at a... Uh, there. They were actually looking for you, to be fair. I was at a bed <laughs> in Germany. And they come up to the... Is Daniel here? I'm like, oh, no. no. I'm I'm like, sorry. Where's Daniel? So he's busy with Wave. Like, you're, you're Mike right from the podcast. I had a couple people take a selfie yeah. with me. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. You yeah, give them a un- shout out. Yeah. They're probably listening. Well, I hope they are. Hey, talking about appreciate you guys. You made me feel really cool. (laughs) Okay, that's all. We should uh, wrap up. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for being on the show today. Um, We will see you next time for episode twenty nine. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but it's definitely going to be a good one. Cheers.